traps, tracking in complex sensor systems. It's Feng Yin. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about fundamental bounds on position estimation using proximity reports. This work has been published in the Proceedings of the IEEE Vehicular Technology Conference in Nanjing, 2016. Hey, this is Feng. Uh, I'm a postdoc uh, working on the Trex project at Ericsson Lidship in Sweden. What is the motivation of this work? With the rapid development of beaconing techniques, for example, the iBeacon introduced by Apple, we believe that more and more indoor location-based services will be relying on event-triggered proximity report. Here is an illustrative example. When some BLE-enabled mobile device approach to a reference BLE beacon installed at the entrance of a shop, a welcome message will pop up followed by some advertisement. The idea is essentially similar to cell identification for outdoor positioning. In contrast to the conventional framework, where the received signal strength reports are transmitted periodically, proximity reports are considered to be event triggered. For instance, when entering or leaving the coverage area of a reference BLE beacon in our framework. Harness of proximity reports in an event triggered fashion may result in novel positioning system with significantly reduced overall signaling overhead and communication bandwidth. Smaller database for storage as well as cheaper deployment and maintenance cost. So this is the outline of my presentation. First, I will give a quick recap of RSS proximity report, how it is obtained and used for positioning. And then I will introduce a simple Sigma model based upon which several fundamental lower bounds are evaluated. Then I will show some experimental results and conclude this work. So a received signal strength measurement is obtained from the power delay profile and represented using 6 to 8 bits in various systems. In the SQL, received signal strength is called RSS for short. RSS measurements are more often used than other types of position-related measurements, simply because they are easy to obtain. But algorithms using RSS measurements can only provide coarse localization accuracy due to the fast and slow fading error in the RSS measurements. A binary proximity measurement can be obtained simply by comparing an RSS measurement with the preselected threshold, here denoted as PTH. The value of a proximity measurement indicates whether or not a target is in the coverage area of a reference. VLE beacon. For the time being, let us simply assume that the RSS measurements are noise-free and the environment is homogeneous. We can then relate an RSS threshold to a coverage radius D as shown in the figure on the left-hand side. Inside the coverage area, a receiver will receive a binary bit 1 with probability equal to 1. Otherwise, it will receive a binary bit 0 outside of the coverage area. Moreover, this figure also clearly shows that with only one proximity measurement, we can only very closely locate the user equipment. In order to mitigate location ambiguity, we could fuse a multiple proximity measurements obtained from different reference nodes. The figure on the right-hand side gives one example where three reference nodes are deployed and six smaller regions form as intersections of the three individual coverage areas and the boundaries of the deployment area. In this example, a received vector 0, 1, 0 indicates that the receiver is in the coverage area of the second reference node while beyond the coverage area of the first and the third reference nodes. In this work, we focus on deriving fundamental bounds on the mean square arrow of any proximity report-based position estimate. So in our signal model, we assume a reference network nodes are deployed to locate a stationary user equipment. The three-dimensional positions of the reference network nodes, PI, 
assumed to be precisely known. The 3D UE position to be determined is denoted by P. The UE measures received signal strength RI from the ICE reference network node and convert it into a proximity report CI via hot thresholding. Here I am. PTH is a trained RSS threshold. One method to obtain a reasonable RSS threshold PTH was recently introduced in our Fusion 2015 paper. In the SQL, we simply assume that the RSS threshold PTH has been tuned a priori. In this paper, we adopt a simple propagation model, namely the underlying RSS related to the ICE reference network node, while follows an empirical linear log distance pass loss model, where AI is a reference pass loss measured at preselected distance D0. BI is the pass loss exponent. The Euclidean distance between the UE's position P and the ICE reference network node's position PI is denoted as DIP. The error term EI is assumed to be Gaussian distributed with zero mean and the variance sigma square. The propagation model parameters AI, BI, and sigma I square for I equal to one to N are assumed to be known a priori from offline calibration. The error terms measured for different reference network nodes are assumed to be mutually independent. After we have designed the parameter estimator, where often we also want to verify whether it's satisfactory or extra effort for tuning is worthwhile. To that end, we can compare the MSE of the designed parameter estimator with some performance lower bound. We know from estimation theory that estimation lower bounds are placed on the mean square arrow of a parameter estimator with the expression given as follows. Where B theta is a bias function, gamma denotes the information matrix and epsilon denotes the translation matrix. It's noteworthy that we use here theta to denote a subset of the UE position P, for instance, unknown two-dimensional positions x and y, but known z component. In the expressions of the information matrix and the translation matrix, eta is essentially another function of theta, which specifies a bound. Next, we derive two different lower bounds on the proximity report based position estimation MSE. They are the Kalamalau bound and the Branking bound. It's known that Kalamalau bound falls into the category of small error bounds, while Branking bound falls into the category of large error bounds. In what follows, we assume that all regularity conditions for computing a specific bound are fulfilled. If we choose eta to be of this form, we can obtain this translation matrix and the well-known Fisher information matrix of this form in our case. It's not worthy that rho theta is newly defined for the sum of bias theta and theta. It's not difficult to verify that the Klamala bound can be obtained in closed form. Finally, we note that Klamala bound is equivalent to the first order Patachaya bound. Higher order Patachaya bound is believed to generate somewhat tighter bounds than Klamala bound, but at higher cost of computational effort. Despite of the improved tightness, Patachaya bound is still deemed as a small error bound in literature. Next, we will demonstrate a well-known large error bound, namely the Barankin bound. Barankin bound is a large error bound which ought to be better suited for benchmarking proximity report-based position estimator. The eta function relies on a set of test points, tilde pm, m equal to 1 to n. The translation matrix and the branching information matrix can be computed accordingly as follows. The optimal set of test points can be solved from the following unconstrained maximization problem which is unfortunately difficult. Instead, 
a much easier way of providing a set of suboptimal test points is to minimize the diagonal elements of the branching information matrix. Details about the selection process is given in the algorithm block, which comprises four steps in total. In the first step, we generate a set of K candidate test points uniformly and rather densely in the desired area. In the second step, for each candidate test point, we evaluate gamma KK, and K is equal to 1 to K, according to the expression given in the previous slide. Then in the third step, we find local minimum among all computed gamma KK. In the last step, we choose a threshold epsilon to filter out all test points in the vicinity of the respective local minimum. In this way, the selected test points should well represent the ambiguity of the position to be determined. In the experimental simulations, we aim to compare the MSE of the maximum likelihood estimator with the two lower bounds given in the previous slides. The MSE of the maximum likelihood estimator can be derived in closer form. To be realistic, we consider a live Bluetooth Low Energy BLE network deployed at Ericsson Research in Leadership in Sweden. We select in total 25 different UE positions in the service area covered by N equal to 10 e-mobile BLE beacons, which are serving as reference network nodes. The three-dimensional positions of the BLE beacons are known a priori. The underlying propagation model is approximated by an empirical linear log distance pass loss model with the model parameters calibrated offline. The RNS threshold is set to PTH equal to minus 82 dBm. More details about the measurement campaign, offline calibration, and RNS thresholding can be found in our Fusion 2015 paper. For simplicity, we assume that the Z component of the 3D UE position is known to be 1.3 meters, while the X and the Y components are to be estimated. Therefore, theta is a subset of the 3D position P. This figure shines some light on the selection of the test points. Concretely, we show gamma KK, K equal to 1 to K, for the third UE position in a scatter plot, where the final test points in black color are shown to surround the actual UE position. We list the theoretically derived bias and MSE of the maximum likelihood estimator, as well as the two lower bounds on the MSE merely for four UE positions. The results have shown that the maximum likelihood estimator is biased and its MSE matrix is closer to the, to the branching bound than to the Kamala bound. This holds for the other UE positions as well. Especially, the bias can be quite severe, around 7 to 8 meters at some UE positions. For positioning applications, we are often more interested in the overall root mean square error of a position estimator, which is defined to be the square root of the trees of the MSC matrix. In the figure on the right hand side, we show the RMSE of the maximum likelihood estimator versus the corresponding two lower bounds. It's obvious that the branching bound is tighter than the Klamala bound when benchmarking the maximum likelihood estimator, which should also hold for other estimators as well. Here is a short summary of this work. We considered event triggering proximity report based indoor positioning, which will become more and more popular in the future. We derived two fundamental bounds, namely the Klamala bound and the Branking bound. Branking bound, which is a large arrow bound, is more suitable to use as a benchmark than the Klamala bound in our case, where the RSS fluctuates largely and is then severely quantized to get the proximity report. 
experimental results confirmed that the Brunkin bond is much tighter than the Klamala bond for benchmarking the maximum likelihood estimator. Acknowledgement. This work is funded by the European Union FP7 Marie Curie Training Program on tracking in complex sensor systems. For more information about tracks, please visit our site at tracks.u20.nl. Thank <laughs> you.